What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Bama Saltwater Fishing episode. If this is your first time visiting the channel, as always, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. And if you already are, if you're coming back to the channel, I really appreciate you. Thank you for subscribing. Today, I'm out on the beach. The moon is still out. The sun isn't quite risen up yet. And it is like a freaking lake out here. Look how calm it is. The humidity you can cut with the knife. And I did get up at 4.30 this morning. And I come out here a lot and throw that big top water and nine foot rod. So today I'm actually throwing a smaller top water on my seven foot rod with the smaller 4,000 size reel. And this is something that anybody can do even with bass tackle, which is awesome. And that's why I'm doing this, just to show you that you can still catch good amount of fish and you don't have to come out and spend a crap ton of money or buy a giant surf rod to come out and fish the beach. But I am throwing the Vanskull VR50. I have some Yozuri 30 pound braid on here. This is a St. Croix seven foot medium heavy avid inshore rod. So I'm throwing this Yozuri bone color. It's a top knock pencil. It's about a three and a half inch bait. And I have some 30 pound mono leader here coming to a double uni knot. If you can't tie a double uni knot, you can do a small black swivel. So I'm gonna continue walking the beach here. If you wanna join me in this great fishing adventure, let's see what we can catch. You know how pretty that sky is? What, that is just gorgeous. Wow. All right. Bunch of fish blowing up, bunch of bait. And it's just a top water. It's really easy to work. You do like a walk the dog action. If you've ever bass fish, you know what that means. If you have it, you just want that bait to go zigzag on top of the water. Straight back to you. So you reel and twitch, reel and twitch. And you'll get the hang of it the more you do it. But we're gonna work around all these bait schools here. The water is incredibly, incredibly calm. Check that out. Sun's trying to peek through the clouds. That's why early in the morning with a little bit of cloud cover, I'm throwing a bone instead of a bright or silver color because the bone is seen a lot better by these fish during low light and cloud cover. Oh, here's a fish. Oh, I already got one. <laughs> That might be a ladyfish, but they like the Yozuri, I'll tell you that. Come on in, see what you are. See what you are. I think that's gonna be a ladyfish. I think that's what that's gonna be. Oh, and it jumped off. <laughs> so yeah, I don't really feel like touching them. Those ladyfish are pretty fun to catch, but not really good table fare. But that was like the first or second cast with this uh, Yozuri. All right, bunch of action going on right here. Pogies are flipping. That's bait. We're, we're just chasing bait right now. Uh, bunch of it. Okay. Just tossed my Yazuri right in the middle. I wanted to get past it. But man, look at all the freaking bait out here. All men hating too. Gotta be some. Oh, <laughs> I knew there's gotta be. Oh, that one's got a little bit more weight to it. Uh, I think that might have been a ladyfish. Yeah. There are some Spanish out here though. Check my leader. I'm always checking leader every cast I make because these baits, when you spend the money on them, because I don't get Yozuri for free, it'd be nice, but I don't. So you want to check your leader so you don't lose them. All right, another far cast out to them. Loose my drag just a hair, there. Oh, yeah. oh, come on, come on, come hit it. I got a strike, it was a short strike though. They really like this bone color, but man, are they freaking blowing up right now. I don't know where they went. Hey, come on, come on, come hit it. They're just falling the thing. They're trying so hard. They aren't big at all. There, there's a fish. All right, <laughs> lady fish. <laughs> That's what that one is. <laughs> this is fun. These are very fun fish because they're, like I said, they're acrobatic. So they like to jump and when they jump just point your rod at it like when you're fighting a tarpon and majority of the time it'll keep hooked and here it is on the bank he's going to go back but that's a decent sized ladyfish they have really big eyes sandpaper mouths and they love these top waters so let's get the hook out of them 
If you want good shark bait, these are excellent shark bait and big bull red bait, but we're gonna toss it back and let them swim. There you go, thanks for the fight. Oh, right at the bank. Oh, that might be, I don't know if that's a ladyfish or not. That might be a trout. That, oh no, it's a lady. It's a lady. Come on. Crazy. Boom. <laughs> Point your rod at it. Just like you would do if you're fighting a tarpon. Oh no, that's a bluefish. Hey, another species. All right, just got a pretty healthy bluefish. So we're gonna toss him back. Once I get these hooks out. All right, bluefish, there you go. Swim back, not towards me. <laughs> All right, I tied on the trusty silver spoon just so I can get some further cast. This is that Sea Striker casting spoon in that one ounce, and I did upgrade the trebles to the Gamagatsu 4X trebles. Now I'm using 40 pound Yozuri fluorocarbon, a small black barrel swivel for this. So prevent line twists. Let's cast out. See if we can just get something. With these spoons, if you watch my last video, they're pretty easy to fish. You just let them sink and then just jig them up. So we reel them really quick again for a few times and let them sink right down to the bottom again. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, decent fish here pulling some drag. And it hasn't jumped yet. So I don't know what it was, but it got it on the fall. They usually will hit it when that bait is dropping in the water column. So, got some head shakes. Let's see what you are. I haven't seen a jump yet. So I don't know what it is. Hopefully it's not a ladyfish. It'd be cool if it was a Spanish, but it's coming close to the bank. Oh no, it's a Spanish mackerel. Come on, come on, get on the bank. That's a good Spanish too. Boom. Beautiful Spanish mackerel. That right there would be a keeper. That thing would be a freaking keeper. It's as long as my arm. But check out the teeth on that Spanish. This is why you need pliers. All right. What a beautiful Spanish. All right, I'm gonna take him home and then I'm, I got a decent walk back, but uh, he's not gonna survive throwing him back. He bled out too much. And uh, I actually like Spanish mackerel. There's no minimum size limit here in the state of Alabama. You're allowed 15 per person. And then uh, I'm gonna head home so it stays fresh. All right, I got this beautiful Spanish mackerel on that spoon. Got some serious teeth to him and he's a keeper. So I'm gonna take him back with me and put him on ice. All right, I caught this nice Spanish on the beach. So I've got it on ice on the truck. I just haven't get a bag i gotta stop by hooked up and get some more ice because it started to melt but uh he's still fresh beautiful fish check out them chompers on him da, 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 da. it's always fun when you catch a good spanish from the beach so i am going to keep this thing on ice and i'm going to go get some ingredients to make some fish dip let's go do a catch and cook on this freaking beautiful spanish mackerel here all right we are at rouse's if you've never been here it's a freaking awesome grocery store supermarket awesome Yes. <laughs> don't go in there hungry just to just to tell you that Publix and Rouse's do not go in there hungry because you'll spend 15 million dollars on food and snacks because everything looks good and it's super fresh we're gonna go and find what we need I already have most ingredients at home so I'm just grabbing the few things that I don't I will include the recipe down in the uh, description below and also I'll uh, try to put it on the screen here when we start cooking all right need to get some diced jalapeno let's grab a brick of cream cheese here and then one more thing and then let's go Let's see. Some Zatarans, shrimp, and crab oil here. All right, let's go check it out. All right, well, I'm gonna head home and clean that fish up and then prep everything so I can uh, make this dip. But I'm gonna put the camera down and also don't forget your seatbelt when you're driving. <laughs> so, safety. But I'm gonna put the camera down and drive home. One last pit stop, my least favorite. This fish it's gonna be really easy to clean for this recipe. So what I wanna do first is take the back of my fillet knife and I'm just using a Dexter fillet knife here. And I'm gonna scrape the scales off. The Spanish mackerel don't have huge scales, but they have a million of these tiny little bitty scales here. So you wanna get that off because I'm gonna keep the skin on. Flip it over, do the same thing. I love the curve of this knife. It fits the contour lines of these fish, perfect. I'm gonna take my water hose, spray it off. 
All right, I'm gonna cut right here at an angle. They're very easy to slice. Like I said, they don't have very thick skin. And I'm gonna take my knife, come through, and a simple, easy one motion here. Flay it off the bone. Boom. There's one beautiful filet of Spanish. And I got majority of that meat and the guts stay inside. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side here. And just go right along that bone, the whole side of the fish. Helps to have a real sharp knife when you're doing this. Boom, all right. And now what I'm gonna do is pull out this belly meat here. Now I have two beautiful Spanish mackerel fillets pretty easy you now they do have some pin bones and some red meat that run down the middle right here so i'm going to trim those out all right got that out now i'm going to slice this in half so it fits in the pot easy i'm going to do the same thing for this one here i'm going to take these upstairs we'll go over the ingredients list and we'll start to cook it looks like there's a lot of ingredients but there really isn't so first and foremost the most important thing is the fish i have some cleaned with the skin on still but clean and scaled spanish mackerel very fresh i just caught on the beach this morning got a pot i have a fork the zatarans shrimp and crab boil i have some diced jalapenos but any type of pickled jalapenos will work some ranch sour cream a block of cream cheese extra virgin olive oil and some green onions now this is going to be for later when we eat it Got some Ritz crackers, but you pick your crackers of your choice. And you'll just need a pretty simple mixing bowl here. There's a man that fishes up here, and if you're watching this, you're awesome. Uh, his name's Max. You probably know him if you've been on the pier a while like I have, or if you're an original pier rat. But Max gave my family and I this recipe, and man, every time I get Spanish mackerel, this is what I want to do with it. I want to say appreciate you, Max, for that recipe. It may be a little altered from his original recipe, but sometimes you gotta make do with what's in the grocery store. We're gonna do two and a half quarts of water in this sauce pot. Gonna bring it on the stove, and we wanna bring this to a boil. So I'm gonna turn my stove on and on high. Now, I got the lemon one. It usually calls for the regular one, but I'm gonna add a little bit of citrus to it without actually buying lemon. So this one's a lemon flavor, but anything that you buy Zatarans is freaking delicious. So this is a third of a cup. I'm not gonna fill it up all the way because it calls for a quarter, but I can't find the quarter one. But you're gonna take your crab oil here and fill it up. You want a quarter cup. We're gonna let the season come to a boil and then we will add our fish here. All right, we have our seafood boil to a rolling boil here. Now it's time to add the fish. Once you add these fish, you wanna set a timer for four minutes. That's how long you're gonna boil them for. So now it doesn't take long. All right, I'm gonna set this timer for four minutes here. Once four minutes is up, you're gonna turn off the heat and let them rest, and then for 15 minutes. So that'll give us time to prep up all our, our other ingredients in the bowl. So I'm gonna turn off the heat here. All right, there's our timer. I just turned off the heat. I'm gonna keep the lid on, and then for 15 minutes, I'm gonna set another timer. So there we go. Now, just let it rest, and this is poaching that fish in that seafood bowl. And then we're gonna come over to our ingredients and start prepping these in a bowl. All right, I got my bowl and I have some Philadelphia original cream cheese here. So I just bought it and it, on the car right here, it did get soft, but if it's been in the fridge for a while, obviously you want to let it sit on the counter while you're cooking your fish. Now I'm gonna take my ranch, give it a good shake. And I'm not doing precise measurements and you don't have to either, it's all to taste. But we're gonna take a drizzle of this ranch here. So nothing crazy. And then the same thing with the extra version olive oil, just a drizzle. Now I'm gonna take my sour cream and a, just a regular spoon here, but a good spoonful here, just like that, and pop it in there too. Next, I'm gonna take my diced jalapenos here, or pickled jalapenos, either one, pretty much same thing. Take a small little spoonful and drizzle in there. That's enough of that. It's all to taste. If you like it spicy, you can make it spicier. If you don't like it as spicy, you don't like jalapenos or an ingredient, you can leave it out. Now I already diced up some of my green onions here and I'm gonna dump that in there as well. Not all of it, about half. So I got all the ingredients minus the fish and I'm just gonna mix this up pretty thoroughly. This is why you want your cream cheese to be soft so it's easier to mix. And you got all the ingredients in there. All right. And there's not much more left after that. So we'll wait till it's 15 minutes up and then get this fish on the plate. All right, 15 minutes is up. Ball's already mixed. Gonna take my fish over here. I'll tell you what though, it smells really good. 
Okay, we're just gonna put all these fillets on the plate. All right, last piece. That right there smells delicious. It's actually really beautiful poached fish. But we're gonna take this fish off of the skin and shred it up for our dip. But you could eat it straight up like this and I guarantee you probably wanna eat it like that a lot. All right, I'm gonna grab another fork and start taking this skin off here. I'm gonna take my two forks and literally just start shredding this fish up. All right, I'm gonna try a piece myself here. It's still really hot. But before I throw it in my dip, Man, that is really, really good. That poached Spanish with that friggin' Zatarans right here is delicious. It almost tastes like a really good crab, like shredded up crab meat. Like that's really good. I almost wanna eat all that, but I know the dip's even better. We're gonna take our shredded fish and we're gonna mix it into our dip here. All right, time to rake our beautiful fish. All right, I'm gonna take my spoon and just, you want everything evenly coated. That is it. It don't take much to mix that together. I'm gonna put this in a serving bowl and then we'll get to taste it. All right, I'm gonna get me out some in a bowl. All righty, I got my beautiful Spanish dip here and some Ritz crackers and we're gonna try it. So I'm gonna take my Ritz cracker and dip some here and let's try it. Mmm. Man. I hate talking with mouthful, but that is delicious. Delicious enough for me to take another bite here. I'm probably gonna eat this bowl. Mm -mm -mm. But this is like my brunch right now, because it's not quite lunch, but it's not quite breakfast. But you can't get any fresher than that fish right there. I'm gonna finish eating my serving with my crackers, and then I'm gonna put the rest of it, that big bowl that I have, in the fridge and let it be served chill next time. So it's really good cold. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below, that thumbs up. Helps out the video a lot and share it with your friends and family. So I'm trying to grow my channel 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. It is a possible task and I just need your help. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead. It would be a great time to hit that subscribe button. And if you are, I really appreciate you for supporting the channel. If you haven't already, go ahead and check my Facebook page and Instagram if you have either of those. Go give them a like and a follow. And also on TikTok, I'm kind of posting some TikToks. So I guess that's a new thing nowadays. So go follow me on TikTok too. It's Bama underscore Saltwater. I'll have everything down in the uh, description below. But I appreciate y'all support for the channel. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos and we'll see you next time. I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. And we'll see you later.